Hi everyone, Paul Zanner from Northbound Networks here. And in this video, I would like to walk you through the basic setup of the Zodiac WX, including connecting it to your network, logging into the admin interface and configuring the network settings. So the first thing we're going to do is get a copy of the quick start guide, and you can get that from the Northbound Networks forum. And the quickest way to do that is if you go to the Northbound Networks homepage, click on support in the menu bar, and then support forum, and that'll take you to our forum. So in the Zodiac WX section of the forum, you'll see Zodiac WX general. And the first post is latest versions of the Zodiac WX, firmware, source code, and user manual. So click into that, and at the bottom you'll find the quick start guide. So we'll download that. So in the quick start guide, it details the basic configuration, which is what we're pretty much going to go through in this video. So the first thing you need to do is connect your Zodiac WX to your existing network. And you want to connect the WAN port, the wide area network port of the Zodiac WX, to your existing router or modem. Right? And you want to plug that into the LAN port of your router. The next thing you want to do is plug your computer into the LAN port, the local area network port of the Zodiac WX. And you want to set the IP settings on your computer to DHCP. And what that'll do is allow the Zodiac WX to assign an IP address to your computer, and that way you can guarantee that it will be a correct address. So once you've connected them up, you've powered the Zodiac WX up and it's had a chance to boot up, you want to then log in to the admin interface. Now in section 2.2 of the quick start guide, you'll find the default address and you want to connect to that. Now if you type it in manually, you want to make sure that you include HTTPS because the Zodiac WX only listens on the SSL port. It doesn't listen on port 80 for security reasons. So if you don't include the HTTPS, it won't connect. Now, in most browsers, the first thing you'll see is this warning. And the reason you get that is because the browser is saying that the certificate authority that issued the SSL certificate that's on the Zodiac WX is not valid. Now the reason for that is each individual Zodiac WX creates its own certificate. And that way we can guarantee that they're unique and they can't be exported onto another device and compromised. So because it's been generated by the Zodiac WX itself, the browser will not recognize who issued it and you need to follow these steps. So if you click on advanced, and then proceed to the address. You will then get to the login screen on the Zodiac WX. Now, by default, the Zodiac WX has the username of admin and the password of admin. So if you enter that into the login, you'll come to the status page of the Zodiac WX. Now on this very first page, this is under status overview, you'll see the basic configuration, host name, the model, the firmware version that's currently installed, the kernel version and so forth. All right. In future, you'll also see any wireless devices that are currently connected and any DHCP addresses that have been assigned by the Zodiac WX. Now, the very, very first thing you need to do is change the admin password. You don't want to leave it as a default admin password. So if you go to System, Administration, you'll see Router Password, and you want to change this. So type in a new password. and go down to save and apply. And that will apply the new password. And you'll see here that you get a notice at the top saying that the password was successfully changed. Now, if you just want to confirm that, you can click log out 
That'll take you back to the login page and you can try your new password. So as a fail safe measure, if for any reason you lock yourself out of the Zodiac WX, you've forgotten the password, you type the password incorrectly, you've configured it in a way that you can no longer log into it, you may have put the wrong IP address in, what you can do is you can reset the Zodiac WX back to the factory default settings by pressing the reset button and holding it down for 20 seconds. Now, at the end of that 20 seconds, when you release the button, the Zodiac WX will restart. When it restarts, it'll be back to the original settings and then you can log back in with the default username and password. All right, so uh, it describes this procedure here in the very first section about how to reset that if that happens. So the next thing we want to do is set up our IP addresses. So if we go to the network section and into interfaces, we'll see the two interfaces on the Zodiac WX. Now the first one is the LAN interface and the second is the WAN interface. Now the LAN interface is considered the private part of your network and the WAN interface is considered the public side of your network. So by default, the LAN is set to a private address of 192.168.11. You can change that if you want, but you'll find nine times out of 10 that that address is fine and you can leave that. But what you definitely want to do is change the WAN address to whatever is currently used within your network. Now, the way you do that is if you go to edit, And under the general setup, you'll see the default IP address netmask gateway, which is the router that it's connected to, which is your existing router, broadcast address, and so forth. Now you have two options here. You can change this to a different static IP address if you know a valid address that's in your existing network, or you can change it to DHCP client, and what that will do is that will actually ask your existing router for an IP address. That way you know that that IP address is valid and you'll be able to talk to it. Now that's only if your existing router can provide DHCP addresses. If it can't, you need to leave it as static and manually change the IP address. But let's change it to DHCP. Once you've selected that from the list, you switch protocol. What that'll do is update the interface to then use DHCP and you click save and apply. Now always remember to click save and apply after you change the settings because they won't actually save and the next time you restart, they'll be different. Okay, so that is now restarted and you can see that the IP address is actually different. Now that is an IP address that my router, that this Zodiac WX is connected to, has assigned me. Right, and you can see here that that is now changed to dot one three three. Now to confirm that your IP address is valid and you have connectivity, you can go to diagnostics and there's a couple of tools here you can use to check that everything's working correctly. If you hit ping, what that'll do is send a ICMP packet or a ping from the Zodiac WX to google.com. And you can see here that it sent five pings and all of them returned, which means that you are now successfully connected to the internet and any device that connects to the Zodiac WX can also use that connection. So what we want to do next is look at the wireless settings. Now by default, both the 5 gig and the 2.4 gig radios are enabled. If you want to disable either of them, you can hit the disabled button. 
and it will give you a warning that's going to shut that down. But what we're going to do is actually just change the settings for these so that we can use them. So let's start with the 5 gig radio. We go to edit. Now here we have the default settings and there's a couple of things we want to change. So the first one is the country code. Now by default it ships with AU, which is Australia, but you can change that to your country. The reason that you change this is because different countries have different radio standards and you need to be using the channels that are defined in your country. So let's, for example, change this to United States. So if we scroll down to United States, we select that, we click Save and Apply. What that will do is save those settings. It will restart the radio and apply those country settings. So you can see now that the country is US. The next thing we want to do is change the SSID. So the SSID is the network name that comes up on your phone or your computer when you connect to the wireless. Again, you can leave that as the default. It's entirely up to you. If you want to change it, just change that to anything you like. Again, hit save and apply and that will update that SSID to the name that you've chosen. Now, the one thing you wanna make sure again that you do is change the default password. Now you'll see in the quick start guide that the default password is eight sixes. You need to change that straight away. So that is here under wireless security and under key. All right, so all you need to do is change that to a new value. Hit save and apply. And that will restart that radio and you'll be able to connect with that new password. So you can see that it's applying the changes and restarting it. And now that's restarted with a new password. Now you can do the same thing for the 2.4 gig radio. Again, you just go to edit, advanced settings, and we'll change the country to United States. Now you can change multiple settings and then click save and apply, but just remember that you click save and apply when you're finished, otherwise it will revert back to the old settings again. So again, we'll go into security and we'll change the default password. We'll hit save and apply. And we'll step restart and you can see that the country code is now the US and we have changed our wireless settings. So just to confirm that, if we go back to status overview, we'll see that we have uh, two radios and I am going to connect my phone to the wireless. And you will see here that I enter the new password that we set. I can now join the wireless. My device will show up here as an associated station and you'll also see that it's received a IP address from the Zodiac WX. All right, so my iPhone's connected and we've got our transmission rates and so forth. Okay, so now that we have our Zodiac WX connected to our network, we've changed our admin password, we've changed our default wireless settings and password. The last thing we want to do is just confirm that we have the latest version of the firmware. So if we go to system, and backup flash firmware. Actually, just before we do that, we go to 
the status page. So status overview, you'll see here the version that's currently running. Now back on our forum, if we just go back to the forum. where we'll find the latest version of the firmware. You'll see that the current one is version 1.0 and the build date. Now this has only just been released, so this is the very first public version of the firmware. And we can see that that's what's installed. Now I'm gonna assume that at some point there will be a new version that you'll want to update to. So what you would do is you would download this and then you would go to system backup flash firmware. You would then choose the binary file that you've downloaded from the forum. So which is this one that I've downloaded here. Click open and you'll see it's loaded in here. Now, under keep settings, basically what that means is if you check that box, all your existing settings, so your Wi-Fi settings, your IP address settings, your passwords and everything else that you've configured since you set up your Zodiac WX will be retained. If you uncheck this box, when it restores, when it updates the firmware, it will actually restore it back to factory defaults. So unless you actually want to reset it, keep that checked. So if we select flash image, it will upload that firmware. And you'll get a verify screen. Now, this is important. What you need to do is just confirm that the file that you uploaded is one, a valid firmware binary file. And secondly, that it hasn't been tampered. And the way it does that is actually uses a checksum value. And you need to confirm that the checksum values that your file has generated are the same as the ones that are on the forum. So if we see here, then this one, for example, ends in AF585, AF585, and the SHA-256 ends in 47BAC, 47 BAC. So what that tells us is this file is complete, it is intact, and it hasn't been tampered with. And what you do is click proceed. You'll then update that firmware file. After a couple of minutes, the, the Zodiac WX will reboot, and you'll get the login screen that you had at the start. Now I'm not going to do that at the moment because we're still using it, so I'll hit cancel. go back to the firmware file. Now the other thing that you can do is if you need to back up your settings, you can actually generate an archive and that'll take all your settings that you've configured, download them to a zip file, which you can then save and you can restore at any time by using that to restore that backup. Okay, so that is it at this point. So we've set up our admin password. We have configured our WAN address. We've configured our wireless SSID and passwords, and we have updated our firmware. We haven't touched on the OpenFlow settings yet. There's a little bit more detail required for us to run through that. So I'm gonna save that for a separate video at this point. Uh, which will be available soon and we will get a controller set up, we'll get it connected and we'll have uh, flows configured on the Zodiac WX. So until then, thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions, please post them onto our forum and we have a great community so they'd be more than willing to help you with any questions and I will see you soon.